it's hard to imagine it now, but the Mark III Ford Focus was an incredibly radical design for its time in 2011 when it came out. If you think about the rivals that existed at that time, like the Vauxhall Astra, the Volkswagen Golf and the Renault Megane, they were all quite rounded shapes, they were quite simple, possibly quite bland. And then of course this car came along and blew them all out of the water with its sleek design, its sharp lines and its rakish looks and coupe-like profile. There really wasn't any other hatchback at the time that looked quite as striking and different as this car and, and of course that's something that Ford have always been, been good at doing, isn't it? But of course it doesn't matter how interesting or crazy a design is. If it's a car that's going to sell millions, then you will very quickly find that it blends into the background. And of course, that happened with this Ford Focus. Anyway, that's the design of it. But is it actually any good? In 2024, is this car still a worthy buy? Stay tuned to find out. I think Focus is a good name for this car. It feels like a focused car. The very design of it, the kinetic design language that Ford used, which is to basically create a car that looks like it's moving even when it isn't, it seems to carry through into the interior and I've got these A pillars in front of me which feel like they're heading towards a point in front, like they're directing you forwards in motion. The dashboard is kind of designed to be all around me in this very easy to access position. The handbrake is like right there, kind of sticking up out of the dashboard, very easy to access. It's like your hand only has to move a very short distance from the steering wheel to control anything in this car. And then that carries through to how the car feels to drive because it's got quite a nice ride comfort to it, yet it's really sharp, it feels sharp, the steering is quick, even at lower speeds you can kind of tell that there's something there with this car. It's very easy to drive, it's very very light steering, it feels like you're relatively low down in the car. The gear change is, I guess what a journalist would call positive, it's a positive gear change because it, it feels like it wants the gear. When you, when you go to change gear, you can literally change gear with a finger. So the first downside that I noticed with this car, and it's, it's to do with that focus to design of the, uh, the A pillars sticking out, they kind of do obscure quite a lot of scenery when you're trying to navigate around a roundabout or pull out of a junction. I know it's a modern car issue in many cars, but it does feel particularly blocking of vision. And then the windscreen wipers, which kind of operate in that outward sweeping motion from the centre, they don't quite reach all of the screen on the right hand side or the left, so you feel like your A pillar is even bigger when it's raining because you can't see through all of the water droplets that are accumulate there. The visibility in the back again because of this kind of like kind of cool and, and sleek design you do get quite uh, limited visibility out of the back window and the rear three-quarter pillars as well. But it does make up for it in some way in that it's got these very large wing mirrors and in this car because it's the titanium version it's got rear parking sensors which uh, just make it that little bit easier to maneuver. So there were three particularly interesting things that you could get on this car. Now this car has one of them, which is the heated front windscreen. Now that was a Ford thing, the quick clear windscreen. In winter, when you quickly want to just defrost your screen or demist it, it's got these little elements running through the screen. And yeah, you can see them uh, sometimes, but they're not particularly distracting. The other thing that this car could come with, which I think was really cool, and I've never seen that in any other car, is the little things that pop out from the door to protect the door. When you open the door and you slam it into a wall, or your kid does, which is more likely, it protects that edge of the door and you don't get the horrible scrapes and your car starts rusting. The other thing that this car came with was uh, Active Aero, which is the kind of thing that you might get on a, a Ferrari or a Porsche, but it's essentially the grills at the front of the car. They can open or close depending on the temperature and what the engine needs or whether you just needs more aerodynamics. In addition to that, you've got nice features that you can have on this car like uh, rain sensing wipers, auto dim rear view mirror, a nice Sony sound system with lots of speakers, cruise control, uh, speed limiter. It's all on the steering wheel as well, which means it's really easy to use. If you've driven a Ford of this era, it won't come as a surprise to you, but everything in this car on the dials and the screens and everything is blue. You've got these kind of like baby blue needles and graphics on the dials and that's quite different to most cars. Most cars would go with orange or green and Ford maybe it's the blue oval they've gone with blue for everything. You've also got this little picture of a car which simulates what your car is doing be it the door open or the lights on. It comes on in this little picture of the car. A very uh, simple version of what you get in a Tesla. Ford got there first. The infotainment screen in the centre is quite laughably small, by today's standards at least. It's a tiny little screen and things like the sat nav on there are really hard to actually see what's going on because it's such a small screen but the advantage I think is that Ford have designed it in such a way that it's quite easy to navigate and very very easy to understand and because all that information has to be packed into that small space your eye isn't scanning around all over the place like it would on a big screen and I really do like the graphics on it they, they've held up well despite the fact that they're you know a 12 year old design they've got like nice little animations and soothing blue graphics and icons that make sense and so on 
The cabin's got lots of little cubby holes and thing, places to store things. You've got two big cup holders in the centre console, which will fit any drink that you want in there. Door pockets, which will fit bottles and things. You've got a little glove box to the right-hand side of the steering wheel. You've got the big glove box off to the left, which is kind of an, an all right size, average size. You've also got a sunglasses holder up top, which I always like to see. And then you've got this little tiny thing here which maybe could fit the key for the keyless entry because I've not mentioned that yet this car does have keyless entry uh, so you can just get in by touching the door handle or keeping that key in your pocket and then of course you've also got this nice comfy armrest here which doubles up as a, a rather large storage bin for things underneath it the boot size is slightly smaller than some of its rivals it's not the the biggest in its class but it, to be honest looking at it it still looks very spacious and of course you can fold the seat down I like that indicator sound. I'm not sure whether that's coming through a speaker or... No, I don't think it is, but it sounds nice. I am, I am super impressed with how this car goes around a corner. It, it does handle nicely. It's got nice, sharp steering on it. It's, it's so impressive for you know, a normal hatchback to be able to do that, especially as it's one that actually rides pretty comfortably, even on these 18-inch alloy wheels that you get with the titanium version. But you've got to commend Ford engineers for, for managing to do that. Now I know not that many people necessarily really care about handling, but when you get this car on the right road and you, it's a nice sunny day and you just want to enjoy yourself, but it's also the car that you normally ferry your kids around to school in and go to the supermarket in, it can be a fun car and that's a nice thing to have. So this car is the 1.6 litre turbo diesel engine with 115 horsepower. And although it's not that quick on paper, like 0 to 60 in 10.5 seconds, because it's a turbo diesel, it does have that kind of useful uh, overtaking torque that you, that you get, and it doesn't feel that slow. Now, the petrol engines that were available in this car, there was the one litre EcoBoost, which for its time was the super advanced, sophisticated A4 piece of paper sized engine where the turbocharger stuck to it. And because of its small size, it promised excellent fuel economy and low emissions. I mean, it is quite an economical engine, but they are hard to get the MPG that they are rated at. And there were some issues with reliability in the early days as well for that one liter engine, because it's under a lot of strain, tiny little engine. But this diesel engine, you know, it'll get 60 to 65 MPG quite easily. And it, it's only 20 pounds a year to tax in the UK because of its uh, low CO2 emissions. And now it's got to that point in the video where we ask backseat JJ what he thinks of the back of the Mark III Ford Focus. What do you think, mate? <clears throat> oh, sorry, I thought you were still just babbling on about ride and handling and engines and comfort and all that rubbish. Babbling on? That's a bit rude. Yeah, so back here, you know, it's, it's pretty sort of standard family car kind of stuff. You know, there's not loads back here. I've got a nice little armrest which pulls out with two cup holders in it. There's a 12 volt socket at the back of this center console, which is really handy for, you know, plugging in all of the iPhones and all that kind of stuff. Then there's uh, little door pockets on the side. There's pockets on the back of the seats. There's these little lights up on the top here, and it's the same in the front as well. It's two lights, but it's built into this one circle. So it's actually hard to see them both coming on. Spacious, you know, there's it, it, enough room for me to sit behind JJ, six foot tall. There's a little bit of knee room spare and a little bit of headroom spare. So yeah, all in all, a pretty uh, pretty spacious car. Back to you, mate. Carry on babbling on again now. All right, cheers, mate. In 2014, they facelifted this car and they gave it the front grille off of an Aston Martin. And I'm not kidding, because Ford owned Aston Martin at the time, it meant that they could actually just use that grille you know they could just steal it off their own product they also actually improved apparently the ride and handling which is already excellent to begin with so it can only get better really but i will say that i prefer the grill on this car it's a more sort of neat and uh, less aggressive shouty grill now of course with this being a family car a car that you would potentially drive your children around in and yourself as well you know you're just as important it is a very safe car five star euro end cap had over 90% adult occupancy protection rating. It had lots of safety features, you know, all of the standard things like airbags and ABS and traction control. And it's got something called torque vectoring, which essentially helps you get around a corner. If you're really barreling this car into a, into a corner beyond your uh, ability, then the car is gonna understeer forward. It will actually break the inside wheel and keep the car on track and keep it on the road and get it around that corner. What do you think of this car? Um, let me know in the comments below. What, do you, is it a bit of a sort of an anonymous thing that you never notice or is it a car that you've always kind of secretly admired?
And if you are looking to buy one or you already own one, let us know what you think as well. Just want to say a big thank you to Chen for lending me this car. He uh, lent me a car about a couple of years ago now. It was the Hyundai Coupe, which is a video that I've got over 100,000 views on now. And he's all gone all grown up and sensible and bought a Ford Focus instead of the uh, sporty Coupe. But very much appreciate you lending me the car, Chen. So to bring this review full circle, does the rest of the car match that very modern and, and advanced and ahead of its time design that Ford introduced back in 2011? And I, I want to say yes, it is a good all-round car, it's comfortable, it's got lots of space, it's practical, it's a nice looking car, but it also drives well and it also performs well as well. But the interesting thing to remember is, as of 2025, there will be no more Ford Focus. The latest version, the one that came out after this, has been binned off, that's the end of the line for what we know as the Ford Focus now. If you want a little piece of history, then uh, this, this Ford Focus might be a good one to go for. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and uh, comment down below and I'll uh, see you in the next video.